Hello, and welcome to another episode of our fibers and fabric series. Today we're going to talk about semi-synthetic fibers. If you haven't watched our other videos um, on the introduction of fibers and fabrics and fabric construction types, I recommend you do that. Um, let's get into it. What are semi-synthetic fibers? Well, here are some characteristics of a semi-synthetic fiber. They use natural base with synthetic processes to create a new fiber. It's very important. They're a mix of synthetic processes and natural um, resources. Uh, the fiber can be composed of both natural and synthetic elements. So it might be, for example, some um, cellulose, which comes from plants, treated with some chemicals, which might uh, be derived from petrochemicals or might be developed synthetically to produce a new fiber. Semi-synthetic materials have the comfort properties of natural fibers with the strengths of synthetic fibers. They usually have good drape. They're often uh, developed to imitate silk, um, which is a very expensive fiber. Um, and so you can see they have often as good a drape as silk. They're possibly sustainable, not probably sustainable, and not definitely sustainable. So potentially they're sustainable depending on the way that the resource is generated, for example, the cellulose, uh, and the uh, processes used to create the fiber itself. They have similar climatic and care instructions to natural fibers, um, but are often more durable than natural fibers alone. So here are some common synthetic fibers. First up, we have rayon, often called viscous. Uh, rayon is made from uh, cellulose base. Then we have casein, which is made from a milk protein base. Then we have acetate, which is made from a cellulose base as well. And then plant oil based uh, fibers, which obviously are made from plant oils. Of course, I'll tell you more. This is important. Okay, let's talk about rayon. First up, let's take a look at this. There's a rayon dress there on the far right. This is a Molino uh, dress developed in 1942 as part of the utility clothing scheme. Um, you can find this dress in the v, uh, Victorian Albert Museum. You can search the collections and you'll, and you'll find it there. But to give you an idea that uh, rayon goes back quite a way. And we can see here some rayon under a uh, microscope looks uh, semi-transparent. It was developed in 1855 to imitate silk, and you can see it has some uh, similarities to a silk fibre when under um, magnification. Uh, it's made from regenerated uh, fibre from wood pulp and other sources of cellulose, sometimes cotton trash, trash uh, and other kind of um, material-based waste materials, uh, uh, vegetable-based waste materials. Um, raton, hmm, that's interesting, that should say rayon. Rayon is often called viscose, modal, lyocell, or tensile. Rayon is versatile and it can be used, uh, uh, it can be made to imitate the feel uh, and texture of natural fibers such as silk. Rayon is soft, smooth, absorbent, and dries very quickly. Uh, rayon can be weak when wet, has low elasticity, and often requires specialist cleaning. Now, uh, viscose, modal, lyocell, and tensile all are derived from different uh, fiber. Uh, bases. Uh, lyocell and tensile, for example, um, are derived from um, eucalyptus uh, and beech trees, respectively. Let's take a look at casein fibre. So you can see that casein fibre here, the example I've chosen, um, shows a pair of boxer shorts. And often uh, it's knit into um, jersey style fabrics and used for, for clothing like underwear. And you can see underneath the microscope, um, it looks very much like hair. Casein fibers are made from the polymerization of uh, acrylonitril um, with animal, uh, natural animal casein, casein, so milk protein. It has optimal moisture absorption, uh, absorption like natural fibers, so it replicates those natural fibers that it's designed to replicate quite well. It's soft and tactile, um, which makes it perfect for things like underwear. And it has a light insect resistance due to its acidity. So it makes it perfect for, you know, some uh, areas of the body that might uh, be prone to microbial um, infestation, like, you know, underarms, um, groin, that kind of area. Unfortunately, casein has low abrasive qualities and is attackable by mold, um, which means uh, it being warm and wet is, is not ideal. Uh, casein is produced using milk and can be linked to animal cruelty. Now, there are significant animal cruelty issues relating to the dairy industry, which um, you know can impact the production of casein fibre. However, it uh, could potentially be sustainable given that it uh, can use waste milk. So milk that has perhaps gone off and milk that can't be used for human uh, consumption or other purposes. 
Next up our list we have acetate and you can see this is a Charles James evening coat from 1937 um, which is actually stuffed with goose down so it's a mix of our semi-synthetics and our natural fibres there. Again from the Victorian Album Museum um, and you should check out their collection they've got phenomenal um, fashion library. You can see the acetate under the microscope here is very very smooth in a similar way to our other semi-synthetics and to our synthetic fibres that we've looked at. So acetate is manufactured by treating wood pulp, cellulose or cotton linters um, with acetic acid. Uh, this creates a kind of pulp which is then extruded or spun um, to create these fibres. It can be soft and lustrous similar to silk, you can see from the, from the magnification they're a very smooth surface. It unfortunately has low tensile strength. Because it's made of a bit like a, up out of a bit like a soup, um, there are no long fibres to maintain the strength. Uh, as opposed to something like linen, for example, which has very long, long fibres. Um, it's shrink, moth and mildew resistant, which makes it um, an ideal fabric for lots of different applications. Uh, despite having a base of cellulose, acetate requires specific dyes, although it maintains colour fastness. So because of the uh, acid and because of it's produced, it requires a very specific dye, but uh, can be dyed very well and maintains that colour fastness um, for a long time. Although it does respire, require specific cleaning often, uh, it may require things like dry cleaning. Now this is a newer, um, you know, section here, and I, I want to talk about in a kind of more of a broad, uh, a broad sense. But we're going to primarily going to look at um, at PLA um, as an example of plant oil fibre, and you can see this dress on the far right. I very much wish I could give you a credit for it, but I can't actually find the original of the dress, although it is made using PLA fibre. And we can see our PLA fibre uh, under the microscope here, you know, is, is uh, reflecting or polarising lots of different types of light, um, which gives you an idea of how it's been produced. So plant oil fibres are created from plant uh, producing oil, which uh, with the most common being corn and soy. PLA fibre that we're looking at in this dress and under the microscope are made from, uh, made from corn. So they respond in a very similar way to polyester. So actually what we're doing is instead of using a petrochemical, uh, uh, a fossil fuel oil base to create our plastic fiber, which is what polyester is, we're using a plant oil base. Uh, they are hydrophobic, which, mean, which means they uh, repel water. They do not retain odors. These are very similar properties to polyester. They're wrinkle resistant and easily laundered in the same way that polyester is. Uh, PLA, polylactic acid, uh, is used uh, in the plastics uh, industry as a PET substitute. And if you remember from our other video, PET is the uh, main form um, of plastic used to create polyester. Now they have very high tensile strength and more UV resistant than polyester, which makes them perfect for uh, things like sportswear, um, or for cordage, or for things like bags, anything that you might use a high grade polyester for. Now here are a range of other, other semi-synthetic fibres. We have Pinatex, cactus leather, orange fibre, uh, riff fibre, uh, bamboo, uh, uh, nanolus, uh, lab-grown skin and bacteria and fungus-based fabrics. That is to say that there are a million different ways to produce fabrics uh, and fibres using synthetic and semi-synthetic processes. Uh, it's important to do the research and find one that works great for you. Thank you so much. Um, oh, let's think of one. Jeffrey Starr told me that you should like and subscribe. Um, if not, follow us on Instagram. If not, don't worry about it. Enjoy these videos and I'll talk to you soon.